Hello, this is Steve Hillpold with WCI Consulting. Today we wanted to put some material out there for you to give you some tips and tricks around the web intelligence tool, specifically around the user response function and how you can convert strings from a user response function into an actual date value, provided that you're requesting dates from the user. And that way you can utilize those dates in your report for any type of calculations or date difference functions that you need to leverage uh, within the report itself. So what we're looking at here is a sample report that we've put together. Uh, we'll kind of walk through each of these columns. But essentially this is a report that's showing you know, account payables by PO number and by invoice amount. So what we want to do is in this report we have a header column up here that's showing you the difference in the days that were selected by the user at runtime and it will automatically populate that number value there with the difference in days between the beginning transaction date and the ending transaction date. So if you look at our query in this particular example, we have two individual prompts that are requested from the user. Um, we're looking for them to provide us with a start date of when they want to start or to view account payable information as well as an end date. So you'll see the parameters that we have set up in our query filter panel here. Both of these are set for prompt values. And both of these, uh, this transaction due date dimension object is a date at the database level. So you'll be leveraging a calendar function when you execute the report. So I'm just going to refresh this report. And again, it's going to prompt us for a beginning date and an ending date. So for this example, we are selecting one month of data to be returned and displayed on the front end web intelligence report. So as we walk through this example, you'll see this first formula that we've got in the report for the title. It's showing us our account payables from October 1st to October 31st. Now the way that we pulled these dates is using the user response function from this variable. So we have our hard coded text that tells us the title of the report, account payables from, and then as I mentioned, we're using the user response function here to return the beginning transaction date and the ending transaction date. So what we've seen with a lot of our clients is that the time that's returned from the user response function is really not necessary. A lot of times, most people just want to see the date that the user selected during runtime. So part of the reason for this variable is to exclude the time as well as give you the ability to turn this user response into a date data type so that as I mentioned earlier you can use it within functions or within calculations at the report level. So if we take a look at this first example we're applying our logic to this particular formula in the report and you'll notice that the time is stripped off of both of the October 1st and October 31st dates. So if we take a look at this variable, this is utilizing, again, a hard-coded value for the title. And then we're referencing two different variables that we've created to support this functionality, the beginning date and the ending date. So if we look at the beginning date example, you'll see that it's a, it's a fairly lengthy formula. But what I've done is I've broken it out here to give you an idea of what's actually happening in order to convert the user response string data type into an actual date. So the first thing that's tricky about this particular scenario is related to the fact that you can either have a one or two digit month or you can have a one or two digit day and you have to dynamically determine where to parse these values out in order to properly convert it to a date value. So for this particular formula, we've got two individual processes that pull back the month, day, and year, and then we wrap that around, we wrap a two date function around that in order to convert the string into the appropriate date format. So this first substring here, what we're doing is we're parsing out the month value. So we're taking the, you can see we've got the response, user response function, which is returning the string date function that you see in the title here. But we're, we're taking a substring of that and only pulling from the first position up into the first forward slash, which gets us a value that looks similar to this. So we have the month, 
with the forward slash. So that's the first part of our conversion process. Secondly, what we do in this function is again we take a substring of the uh, user response prompt value, but this time we start at the first position where we see the forward slash, and then we add a space to that so that we start where the actual day number is in the string. And similarly, we take the position of the year by dynamically looking at that forward slash because this will allow us to accommodate the challenge you run into when you have a single uh, digit month, a double digit month, or a single versus a double digit day. And then after all of that is completed, we put the two-day function around it in order to convert it to a date value. So the result is a formula that looks similar to this. So when we look at the actual formula behind this, we've, uh, as we saw earlier, we're looking at the actual formula that we just created in order to display this on the front end versus having the date and time value from the user response function. Now finally, the best, the, the, one of the other advantages to doing this, uh, we have a, a box here that tells us how many days are being displayed in our report. So obviously we're looking at data from October 1st to October 31st. So this is showing us 30 days of data. And what we did here in our days displayed variable, now that our user response value has been converted to a date, we can leverage some of the date functions that exist within Web Intelligence to pull back the data we're looking for. So in this case, we're using a days between function and we're inserting our beginning date user response variable and we're comparing that against our ending date user response variable. So when you look at that, it gives you a total value of 30 days. 